living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, and use me, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my God, and my strength. Amen. 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 Our scripture that was read for you today, 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 18 through 18 and 19 says, For Christ also has once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. And then verse 19 says, By which he also went and preached unto the Spirit in prison. Now, spirits in prison, now that could be paradise because that's where spirits are. But in the context of this, if you read a little further, you see he's talking about a period of time back before the flood. So it leads me to believe he's talking about another spirit world. And because he's talking about another spirit world, he went there. And my subject for today is, what in hell happened? <laughs> now, if you feel like you're going to lose your sanctification, let's just turn to the name and say, what happened in hell? <laughs> Something did happen, and let's, let's talk about that a little bit. Jesus had just instituted the Lord's Supper, and he went through the foot washing ceremony and all that, and then he went out into the Garden of Gethsemane, and he prayed to God. You know that prayer because it's written in John 17, but he prayed to God, and after that, they came and arrested him. They arrested him and carried him before seven trials. And at the end of those seven trials, he was pronounced guilty and sentenced to death. So they sent him over to the praetorium. And there, all kinds of things happened to him. Brutal, they brutalized him and they abused him and just beat and just did all kinds of things to him. Then they took him to the cross, nailed him to it hung in there, and he died. He died on the cross, and he was buried. After he was buried, we know the story, and three days later, he got up. But the question is, what happened from the time he was buried until the time he got up? That's why I asked the question, what happened in hell? Because we are told that that's a possibility, and we're going to talk about that. And whether or not I answer that question or not uh, of what happened in hell, I doubt if I will, but we will at least provoke your thinking. But first, let's talk about hell. What is hell? It's the wicked, it's uh, where the wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. This is what Psalms tell us that hell is letting us know that it is a place. It's real. Right. Hell ain't nothing to play with. It's real now. Right. And, and, and let's talk about it. In the Old Testament, you will find the word Sheol. Sheol is the uh, Old Testament definition of hell. And in that, you can see what the definition is, but it is it's a temporary place, as they refer to it in the Bible. They think it's a sort of a staging place. That's where you're going. You're, you're waiting there for judgment. And in the New Testament, it's referred to as Hades. And Hades is a, it, it, it being the Greek word in, in the New Testament. Uh, and there are scriptures that are given that's posted there on the, on the board that you can see the scriptures that were referred to, that refers to these various uh, notes. Now, the one thing I'd just like to say about Sheol and Hell and Hades is that they are the two names of the immediate uh, state of the wicked dead. That's what we are told in the Bible. This is sort of the immediate state. Let us know that it's, it's, it's sort of a, uh, what do you call it, a, a staging area. Uh, Mr. Medley, he has a name for things like that. He comes up with some good ones, but I'll just call it a staging area. <laughs> then we come up with the name Gehenna. Gehenna is the future abode of the lost. It is where sinners are, are going. It is the eternal
eternal place that denotes the where eternal torment will take place uh, of those who are pronounced in the end to be sinners at the day of the great judgment. Hell is a place for sinners. Now, I'm just going to summarize this real quick for you. Hell was not made for mankind. It was not made for mankind, but it is a place now for sinners. Now, first of all, Jesus refers to it when he talks about Judas. And he says, Judas, after doing this thing, you know, Judas, he, he betrayed Jesus and he went and he, he, when he found out that Jesus was going to be sentenced to death, he went back to the high priest to try to give back the 30 pieces of silver. They wouldn't take it. So what happened? Judas goes off and he hangs himself. And what, what the scripture tells us here in Acts, it says, from which Judas, by transgression, fell, that he might go to his own place. What is his own place? It is hell. And in John, the high priestly prayer that I referred to, where Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said this about, about Judas. He says, while I was with thee, with them in the world, I kept them by thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept. And none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And that son that he lost was Judas. So he went to this place. Hell is an eternal place. Hell is, uh, in the end, will, be, will end up in the lake of fire. As you will find in Revelation, hell is taken and just thrown into the lake of fire. But it was not prepared for mankind, it was prepared for the devil and his angels. And we find that in the scriptures, uh, in Matthew 25, 41, that it was prepared for the devil and his angels. Now that we know that hell is real and it's a place, let's talk a little bit now about the subject matter. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third, the third day he rose from dead. That's what we said. But when I first learned it, he dead and buried, and descended into hell. The third day he rose from the dead. Somewhere down the line, that was taken out of the Apostles' Creed. But if you do research on the Apostles' Creed, you will find that that phrase is in the original Apostles' Creed, that he descended into hell. The third day he arose. So, that lets me know then that yes, that tells me that there's another reason that that phrase is in there, and that is to show that Jesus Christ literally died. There was a separation of the body and soul. And, and so, when that separation occurs, the this, this soul and the spirit goes off to this other place. In 1 Peter, it tells us that Jesus went down and preached to the spirit world. Between his death and his resurrection, his disembodied uh, spirit went and preached to the unseen, into the unseen world. He descended there. What is the spirit and what spirits are we talking about? The spirit world is the place where the spirits await for the resurrection. It could be hell or it could be paradise, depending upon what state you were in when you left here. So uh, I hope I don't confuse anybody with this, but it could be one of the two. And you know, Paul refers to paradise as the third heaven. He, he, he comes in and he tells you that about a man that went to third heaven. Herein lies the question of considerable controversy. It seems like theologians have never been able to agree on this as to what really happened. Therefore, I don't feel bad about the, the way the Spirit has led, has led me to my conclusion. They couldn't, so hey, they know better than I am. So we went with it and we used the scriptures and here's what we've come up with. He went to preach to the fallen angels about his victory. 